Southern Illinois and Creighton, a rivalry that has nothing to do with geography and everything to do with on-court success. Far and away, the two best programs in the Missouri Valley in the last half decade. They square off today at the SIU Arena. Quick look at this series history, and here's all you need to know. Last six years, eight NCAA bids between these two schools combined. Dave Rems and Doug Gottlieb as we take a look at our star watch. Yeah, well, Nate Funk leads Creighton in scoring and rebounding, second in the conference in scoring, but he's going to have to match up with Darren Brooks, returning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. And check this out, Dave. Leads the team in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals. I would say he does it all for the Salukis. He is an unbelievably complete player. We've had the pleasure of watching him now. This is the third time in the last two years, and he is phenomenal. Keep this in mind about Brooks. 4.5 assists per game. That would be the second best total in Southern Illinois history. And oh, by the way, as Doug said, he leads them in everything else. As Creighton brings it into the front court after winning the tip. This is Tolliver now. Funk. Also a very complete player. Now a near steal, and that's something we're going to see a lot of from Southern Illinois, an outstanding defensive team. As we take a look at the lineups for Creighton, we told you about Funk. Tyler McKinney, a remarkable story, has overcome two cornea transplants. More on him in a bit. In addition to Brooks for the Salukis, keep an eye on the freshman Matt Shaw coming off a career game against Indiana State as Funk misses. And the rebound is pulled out of there by Creighton. They get another shot at it, and very quickly missing is Johnny Mathis. So Southern Illinois with its first possession. And Southern Illinois likes to spread the floor, penetrate, get mid-range jump shots. Not a terrific three-point shooting team, although they can shoot it. The idea, though, is to score and pick up man-to-man -man full court pressure. See how they do in the half-court set here. Brooks coming off the flu earlier this week, but says he's doing fine now. That was Shaw, now Brooks again. Shot clock down under 10. Tatum. Corner jumper is left short by Brooks, and the rebound goes to Creighton. On the break, Funk with a nice feed to Tolliver. You know, Nate Funk had to play the point at some point last year when Tyler McKinney was lost for the season because of the eye difficulties. He struggled with that position, but see now as a two guard, because he's played the point, still has the ability to penetrate and kick. And, and this is where Creighton becomes effective. They score, they have several different types of full court pressure that not only slow the pace, but lull you to sleep. They try and get steals, get runouts if you throw a lazy cross court pass. The problems there for Southern Illinois, but again, very deliberate in the half court set. Now Shaw. Again, the shot clock well under 10. Stetson Hairston misses the three, and Creighton's McKinney rebounds. Here comes Tyler McKinney. Now Funk. Quick pull up on the baseline, and Nate Funk gets his first two. The Natives already getting restless uh, with Carbondale. Yeah. Well, they've won 50, they're 52 and 1 here over their last four years. So they expect the Salukis to step up and play well at home, but I like Creighton's philosophy. We're gonna slow the pace, we're gonna get in our matchup zone, make them hit shots from the perimeter. Warren misses badly, but the rebound underneath is put in by guess who? Darren Brooks. The 21 straight home wins for Southern Illinois, that is the fifth longest streak in the country. They've won 33 straight conference home games. McKinney. Big three for Tyler McKinney. Yeah, he's really stepped up his game. You know, the team started to lay off him and double on Funk when he dribbled the ball. They had 14. They're getting win over Northern Illinois, just real, excuse me, Northern Iowa earlier this week. That tied his career high. Tatum going to shoot a three of his own, and he hits it. Jamal Tatum. Seven five Blue Jays lead. Oliver swings it in the corner to Mathis, and Mathis hits a three. Well, the Salukis are trying to double up every pick and roll, but Creighton has great spacing. They can really shoot the ball from the perimeter. They're the best three-point shooting team in this league. It shows why there. Six players with at least 21 threes. Vanderbilt, the only other team in the nation that can say that, as Tatum swings it in the corner. Now Hairston misses. Battle for the board, and it'll be Saluki basketball. And Creighton is a team that really likes to spread the floor, shoot jump shots, and when you get the ball into the middle, now watch, off the pick and roll, here's the double, extended on the court, McKinney steps through, nice little ping passing, into the corner, and Mathis can hit that shot. 
Creighton four of six from the field early on. And on top, 10 to five. Now Tatum. Ersten. Passing the, the open shot to Shaw. And the freshman gets his first two. Uh, he's averaging nearly 10 points a game since he's been inserted into the lineup. And this is where they want to ball you. As soon as you step across half court, that man-to-man -man pressure. And there you see the steal. They average about 10 per game. Hairston lays it in and draws the foul. So Southern Illinois getting the crowd going early here. Still 10-9. Creighton defense turning into offense. You'll see a lot of this from the Saluki. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb back in Carbondale. Good tight game early on against two teams that know tournament success very well. Southern Illinois, three straight at large bids, Doug. And at this level, a byproduct of that often is you lose your coach. And this is their third coach in as many years. Yeah, obviously, Bruce Weber, he came here. Then he left and go, went to Illinois. Then Matt Painter came in. He was Bruce Weber's assistant, but he had played at Purdue. And so he goes back to Purdue. And then Chris Lowry comes back, who was here before, but then went to Illinois with Bruce Weber, then returns to a place where he played. And now he's the head coach, the fourth youngest head coach in all of college basketball. First head coaching job for Chris Lowry, and you see the numbers have been very impressive so far. As they finish off the three-point play, and now we've got a 10-10 game thanks to a 5-0 Saluki's run. Funk, off glass, no good, following it up, and Nate Funk staying with it. Follow-up basket by 10, Nate Funk. So four points now for Funk. And Creighton back up on top, 12-10. Creighton doing a nice job of mixing and matching. Now they're back into man-to-man, -man, trying to play solid defense. But they use that press to not only get steals, but especially slow the pace of Southern Illinois' transition game. 15 in the game is Tony Young. Also an outstanding Unbelievable defensive game. player. Yeah. Shaw inside gets surrounded. Misses, goes back up, but it didn't hit the rim. So the shot clock was down to two. But Shaw draws the foul. Well, Dane Altman's just done a phenomenal job. They've reached seven consecutive postseason appearances, five of which the NCAA tournament obviously struggling this year, especially with young and uh, kind of inadequate inside talent, especially rebounding the basketball. His teams are never out-rebounded, and this year out-rebounded by a nearly three point margin on a game by game basis. Now both these teams have been struggling a little bit with the rebounding as Shaw hits that one. This is a guy they hope will be part of the solution for Southern Illinois anyway. Good young freshman player played for the Centralia Orphans winning his high school program of all time about an hour and a half or so up the road here in Southern Illinois. Well they call them the Orphans probably because with that type of winning record if you lose you feel like an orphan. They did get a win last night. Actually, a loss last night, I should say, against Carbondale High School. It's been a tough year yeah. for the Orphans. They're well below 500. Oh, the natives well, must be restless. Yes. Well, when you, you lose a player of that Number caliber. Three, Jamal Tatum. Foul goes Tatum's on Jamal first Tatum. First That's his first. That's the first team foul on Southern Illinois. Winning his high school program of all, all time. time. That's impressive. Of all time. Only one school can say that. I, by definition. I guess. Yes. And it's the Orphans. Of course, I'd like to see the statistical backing of that, but that's what it says. Well, yeah, guy, we're going to go see the database. Yes. Nate Funk wow. hits the three, so Nate Funk off to a good start. He's got seven early points. And it's really impressive to see Nate Funk come out and play so well. Last year, we got a chance to see both these two teams. Of course, they played at the Quest Center in Omaha, and Funk was playing the point. He played quite poorly. Young misses the reverse, and we've got a hell ball. Now Funk is taking his game to a new level, but as you see both of these coaches, it's kind of an interesting contrast in style. Here's the, the dean of coaches in the Missouri Valley in Dana Altman, and then the rookie in Chris Lowry. What's interesting about Chris Lowry taking over this job, third head coach in three years, but it's all the same system, but three very different personalities. You talk to a guy like Stetson Harrison, who he recruited, just came out of the game, it's, you know, our relationship has changed some, especially because I can't call him nearly as much as I used to. Uh, Jamal Tatum said to Lowry a little while back, you know, you've changed. You aren't the same guy who recruited me. I'm going to tell my parents. A little bit tougher than he was when he was an assistant. Friendly roll there. 
for Tony Young. And Tony Young is a guy who can step out and shoot, but watch his on-the-ball defense. He'll just take the basketball from people. Great on-the-ball defender. Has a tendency to fall asleep away from the basketball, but he is vicious with his on-the-ball defense. Mathis falling out of bounds, throws it off Randall Falker, and it's going to be Creighton basketball. Falker is 14. Just checked in the game, a freshman out of St. Louis. Which means when Matt Painter went to recruit him, he had to get the Falkers. <laughs> You've been waiting to use that. I've been saving you? that all day. Now Mathis. Shot clock down to 15. Three on the way. Rims out. And Falker comes out of there with the board. Now Young. Has it knocked away from behind. So that time the great pressure pays off. Mathis. in the game. He wears number 30. Also in for Creighton 15 is Kellen Milliner. Breaks out top. Again, the shot clock winds down to 10. And again, Southern Illinois comes out with a steal. This time it's Lamar Owen. Yeah, they just have a great ability to get their hands on basketballs and deflect it, and then the speed and quickness to go recover the tip basketballs. The problem is, at times, they become stagnant offensively, and they take their time dribbling the ball, dribbling, setting up, and now turning it over. But Falker zigged, and Young comes to the zag, but Young with the block, and they call him for the foul. Well, the turnover by Young, and he tries to make it up for his teammates. You see him trailing the play, and that is not a foul. Not a foul. Got to agree with you. Pretty clean to me. Kind of call you normally would get at home, you would think. You would think, especially when you're 52 and one over your last four years at home. So here's Johnny Mathis to the free throw line. Guy who was overlooked coming out of high school in Louisville went to one of the more storied programs in the country male high school played with three division one players including Larry O'Bannon of Louisville Louisville star running back Michael Bush was also on that team so Mathis not very heavily recruited ended up going the Juco route for one year and then came to Creighton and that's what Creighton really likes they like to bring in junior college guards especially athletic ones even athletic bigs but when they have them for three years because this offensive system which is kind of derivative of of Johnny Orr's offensive system at Iowa State takes players about a year, year and a half to learn. You see Mathis has really stepped up his game year two. They force the turnover. Now Mathis nearly turns it over. It's on the floor, battle for it. And it is a hell ball. It's going to be Creighton basketball. As we remind you tonight, a full day of college hoops on ESPN includes with ACC action, J.J. Redick and Duke going to Maryland to take on John Gilchrist, Nick Kaner, Medley and company. Duke in Maryland also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, the Dish Network today. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN tonight, 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Duke coming off the very impressive win earlier this week against North Carolina. And that's the love affair game between uh, J.J. Redick and the Maryland fans. It's a nice Watts. way of putting it. Nice feed down low there, and Dana Watts gets his first two. Well, Creighton a couple years ago with Kyle Corver had a similar incident with the fan behavior here at Carbondale to the point where last year when we came to Carbondale, there was actually a list of rules of way, and ways in which the Southern Illinois Athletic Department did not want their fans cheering, much like they did when Kyle Corver was in school at CU. As a code book for cheering. Yes. That's something you see very often. They have extra security on hand for this game tonight because Creighton has been treated fairly poorly here in the past years, so they just want to be sure. As the former Mr. Sucker in the state of Kentucky, Lamar Owen, gets his first two. Yes, and the dog pound loves Lamar Owen. Dog pound their student section. Great group here early. They gave you a standing out. I thought it was for you. I wasn't sure. McKinney. This is long, and Darren Brooks, tough for the rebound. Young out ahead of the pack, and he lays it in. Tony Young now has five off the bench. Well, here's what you can't have. A point guard taking a three-point shot in the corner, and no transition defense. Just spells doom and disaster if you have no one back on defense, especially against the Slopers. For two in the game for Southern Illinois is Mike Dale. Missed the last few games with an ankle injury, so back on the court. Has been a valuable contributor for them this year. 
And SIU's pressure forces the turnover. It's going to be SIU basketball. Well, less than a year ago, Tyler McKinney feared he might lose his eye. His remarkable journey just ahead. Back in Carbondale, 1919 ball game. We take a look at Tyler McKinney. Young man who was sidelined much of last year due to a right eye infection caused by a microorganism, a canthamoeba keratitis, which strikes two people in a million, can lead to blindness. His vision was completely clouded over. He literally could not see his hand in front of his face. Had to put drops in his eye every 20 minutes. He needed two corneal transplants. The first one was unsuccessful. The second one did take in April. Doctors told him it would be a year until he could play basketball again. And remarkably, he is back on the court for Creighton just mere months after that. Played six months without touching a basketball, would come to practice, but wasn't allowed to participate. It's really amazing how he has, throughout this entire process, throughout this entire drama, has really maintained a cool head and said, look, I had to sleep. I had to catch up on my sleep because I was having eye drops put in every 20 minutes, let alone try and catch up on my schoolwork. Moats missing, missing short, and Creighton coming, or Southern Illinois, I should say, coming the other way with a two-point lead. I mean, you assume a guy, when he sits at home for six months, can't play basketball, that, you know, he does something with his time. He watches TV. But he couldn't do anything because he hadn't slept in months. Uh, he said he was literally a zombie. I mean, just waking up every 20 minutes. He now gets one drop every two days. Vision is at 20-25. He works with blindness prevention groups in Omaha. As Young commits the foul there on Johnny Mathis. And you think he's valuable to this team? Check these numbers out, Dave. 69 and 18 career record as a starter. 10 and 9 in games without it. That's that's the, that's the, the difference in with Tyler McKinney without. And you can't really you can't really quantify with points or with assists. Yes, he leads them in, in assists, and he averages six points a game, but it's a steadiness, he's a good defender, and he just leads this team in every possible way. Nice interior pass there to Jeffrey Day, and Day going to go to the line. He got fouled by Randall Falker, his first. So Day to the line. Young man who played a couple of years at Washington, as we see him go up strong there, Doug. And he's going to try and dunk the basketball, and he is the... Uh, an unwilling big man. Unwilling big man is, is how he was described by his head coach. And it's kind of interesting because Dana Altman is one of these guys that really likes tough, hard-nosed players that get after it, grind defensively. And Day is a talent. He's long and athletic, but really wants him to be more physical. Moats out of the corner misses. Mathis battling for the board. He has it blocked from behind by Falker. Day gets it, and it's blocked. Here comes Lamar Owen. One-on-one -on -one with McKinney. Owen. Call for the offensive foul. Now, what a play. Hey, Lamar Odom, a, a, a great athlete, but in transition, really, Tyler McKinney has no chance to stop other than setting his feet, taking a charge, and he does so. That's a big, big momentum play. The transition game, and, and, you know, the Blue Jays have had trouble here with transition defense. Only one man back, and he'd usually have two, but that's yeah, a charge. Pretty easy cut. Tenth charge McKinney has taken this year. That leads the team, and uh, Doug, you were talking about quantifying what McKinney does. Their scoring goes down about six and a half points a game without him, and that's one of the ways that it manifests itself as Jeffrey Day throws down the jam. And keep an eye on what Creighton is doing as they're slipping their big men to the post off strain roll action because Southern Illinois wants to jump out double or hedge so hard that it leaves the man who's the roller or the slipper in this case open. Shaw tied up on the way up by Day. It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. Now Creighton has come in here and decided, hey, we're going to battle. Interesting about Creighton is they're five and four on the road. They have a quality road record in this league. They just lost home games which never used to happen for the Blue Jays in the past. Shot clock did not reset on that, so it's down to 10. Tatum works around the screen. Tatum misses with an air ball. Shaw, though, saves it. So now there are three seconds to shoot. Tatum going to try it again. Not there. Brooks, the offensive board, and he gets knocked out of the way up by McKinney. Tyler McKinney 
As we remind you that tomorrow, ESPN2 has women's college basketball regional coverage. It's going to be a great day. February frenzy on ESPN2 among the games in three. Duke and Maryland and also Kansas State going to Oklahoma. And you'll be there in Norman? I will be. Yeah. Should be an outstanding ball game there. Two of the better players in the country. Deanna Jackson, Kendra Wecker going head-to-head. -head. But I'll tell you what, we're going to have great games all over. Bounce around to the most compelling games. Should be an outstanding day. It's always a lot of fun. Do this every February. Good way to get you ready for the women's NCAA championship, which, of course, every game in March on the ESPN family of networks. Brooks hitting one of two, so he has three points. And a 22-22 game. Foul away from the ball going to be called on Jimmy Moats. And Creighton trying to get in their half court sets, trying to set solid screens, but Moats with a moving screen. And you don't want to have a turnover when you don't even get a look at the basket. You know, they're playing so well offensively when they don't turn it over, but a offensive foul, turnover thrown into the stands, all the same. Two of the best teams in the Missouri Valley, certainly over the last five or six years, Southern Illinois and Creighton going at it. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb with you. We're in a building where Southern Illinois has won 33 straight conference home games. Have not lost one since 2001. Stetson Harrison hitting the three there out of the corner. He now has six. Knocked away from behind. Again a steal. And Brooks can't convert on the other end. So here comes Creighton in transition. Mathis. This is Funk. Funk hanging and leaves it short, but it's tipped in by Moats. So it's a one-point Southern Illinois lead. Shaw, the freshman, backs in, and he gets called for the walk. A tight game right now in Carbondale, 25-24, Southern Illinois on top of Creighton. unknown rivalries in college basketball has been everything we hoped it would be. Southern Illinois up by one on Creighton. These two schools between them, eight NCAA tourney bids in the last six years. The rivalry, Doug Gottlieb, is because they're both really good. Uh, they've both been really, really good. I mean, four consecutive regular season championships between these two teams. The Salukis with three in a row. They've never won the conference tournament, so they've always had to get in as an at-large. But look, they have Wichita State coming back into Carbondale later on this season. But that can't be for the conference championship if they don't win tonight against Creighton. See Nate Funk leading the way so far for Creighton. The Blue Jays basketball there. Good defensive game so far. I haven't seen a lot of inside offense. Just four points of the paint total in this game. All coming for Creighton, and that's what we expected. It's a Creighton team that gets about 75% of its offense from the perimeter. For Southern Illinois, it's about 66%. Stetson Harrison leading the way so far for the Salukis. And this is Harrison with the basketball. down here for Creighton. They started 7-0. and oh. Wins over Missouri, Ohio State, and Xavier. Since then, though, they've struggled. Just 8-9. and nine. Southern Illinois won the game in Omaha by 6. Shot clock down to 3. Jumper on the way from Warren. He is no good. And Milliner, who high jumped 6-10 in high school, comes out of there with a the rebound. And great athleticism and his ability to take the ball to the basket as well as shoot the perimeter jump shot is something that he comes off the bench and brings for the Blue Jays. They have a chance here, five minutes to go in the half, to put Southern Illinois down, maybe on the defensive, coming out of the break. And that's something you wouldn't expect, especially as well as Southern Illinois has played here this year. It's our star watch going head-to-head, -head, Funk and Brooks. 
Oh, a three on the way there is no good by Dana rebound, Watts, Miller. but they get the good rebound, and Milliner is just so athletic. Mathis, no good again. It's Watts, the offensive board, and the nice little reverse. And Dane Watts catching it, keeping it high, only averages three boards a game, but hey, yesterday his coach was all over. Crash that offensive block. Jamal Tatum answers on the other end, and Dane Alvin will not be happy as they get it stopped, but then give up an easy bucket. Speaking of giving up easy buckets, <laughs> Anthony Tolliver. Did, did I say Dane Altman? I meant Chris Lowry won't be happy. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Randall Parker checking back in for the Saluki. Interesting pace in this game. It, it, it's almost as if both teams are kind of slugging it out, picking up full court, slowing the pace, and all of a sudden they'll score in bunches and give each other two, four, six points in a row, and then they'll go back to slugging it out again. It's one of those games, it's almost like a football game where it's, uh, battles between the 20 yard lines. That's what we've seen. We've seen a lot of action just trying to get the ball across half court, and then the game slows down once they get it across. Both pretty deliberate offensively. Well, with Shaw trying to set on ball screens, they're looking to overload the weak side off of the screen roll. When you're in a matchup zone, you can screen roll, especially if you have a guy like Shaw to step and shoot. Misses that shot, but it goes out of bounds off the of Blue Jays, so it'll be Saluki's basketball. And on a previous possession, you saw that Southern Illinois trying that weak side overload. What that means is they're screening on the ball on the left side of the floor. Here's Darren Brooks with the basketball. Here comes the on-ball screen. On the weak side, you have a guard on the wing. When the wing, when the corner man comes up to pick him up, he dishes to the corner, and Stetson Harrison gets a wide-open three. Well, they work a beautiful inbounds play. Matt Shaw finishing off the alley-oop. Stetson Harrison gets called for the foul then as SIU tries to pressure, and you see Chris Lowry, his frustration, the first-year coach here at Southern Illinois. I told you took over for Matt Painter, who is spending one year as... The heir apparent at Purdue, and he'll take over next year for Gene Cady, guy who he played for in college. So now Nate Funk, Milliner, and Watts has come alive. Now, beautiful offensive series. Just running their stuff to perfection and give it up to Creighton because they haven't allowed the Salukis pressure to take them out of their half-court sets. Talk about this, this is a pretty good Creighton Road team. They have struggled at home this year. Tatum turns it over. I'd say the building in Omaha, they have a beautiful new building there. It's almost big. so big, it doesn't give them a home court advantage. As Watts misses the jumper, and here comes Southern Illinois. Not so much the case here in Carbondale. It's 9,600 right on top. Again, just one loss in their last 53 home games. Jamal Tatum now has seven. And the sophomore, that's what he does. He comes in and scores points. He's now a starter, but last year as a freshman even. Fearless would come in, just constantly look to Jack shots. And hey, this has been a guy he's, that, that Chris Lowry's actually worked on shot selection, increasing your assist to turnover ratio, and, and limiting the number of poor shots he takes. Now, Watts was feeling it, misses it out of the corner. Here comes Stetson Harrison leading the charge for the Salukis. Now Brooks, relatively quiet. Harrison. Right to the hoop, Stetson Hairston throws it down. How about that? Told you Stetson Hairston could score it. Now in double figures with a great move to the hoop here, guys. Well, a miscommunication by Creighton as they all gather around Darren Brooks at the top of the key. A little pump fake. And Go into the basket. This is the type of energy play that Dana Altman wanted his team to limit. You can't allow this crowd to get into the game, and they've done such a marvelous job for the first 17 minutes of the first half of keeping this crowd, with the exception of the students, sitting on their fans. 33-30 Southern Illinois. This will get him going. As you look at Stetson Hairston, the man who went to prep school at Bridgeton Academy in Maine, coming out of high school in Belleville, Illinois. Bit of an off-the-court problem earlier this year. He and Mike Dale suspended for the first three games of the year. Involvement in an off-campus fight. Both ordered to perform 100 hours of community service. And uh, Hairston, very frank about it when we talked to him today, he said, look, I made a mistake. I'm paying for it, and I appreciate the way it was handled. He said he thought Chris Lowry did absolutely what he should have done. And 
It's been uncomfortable, though, as you were talking about, Doug, because of the relationship between Lowry and a lot of these older players on the team. He was kind of a confidant when he was an assistant. Yeah, but knowing what Chris Lowry has gone through with his family, something we're gonna, we'll talk about a little later, he said, this is a man I respect, and if he has to suspend me, and I gotta sit out games, I was the one doing, doing wrong. And so many times you see players blame their coaches when they're suspended, this wasn't the case. Now he blamed no one but himself, as Jeffrey Day gets called for the foul off the Creighton turnover. It's Southern Illinois on top by three in Carbondale. Thank you, David. We look forward to it. Here it is a three-point lead for Southern Illinois, and certainly Chris Lowry knows that Illinois team very well, assisted for three years under Bruce Weber, including the last one at Illinois. Been a chaotic year for Chris Lowry. Three-year-old son, Kahari, has cerebral palsy, and the day before Lowry's coaching debut, Kahari had an artificial valve for draining placed in his brain. Had to have the shunt adjusted a couple weeks later. His 15th surgery of his young life. That is remarkable. Less than a week after the season started, his wife Erica gave birth to their fourth child, the daughter Jasmine. Erica had been on bed rest for five months, so Lowry was holding down a lot of the, the duties at home as well as here. Uh, coaching the basketball team. Then Jasmine contracted a, a viral disease in her lungs in her first month. She had to be hospitalized. She's now fine, but I'll tell you, Doug, a tough time for Chris Lowry. Yeah, and all these hospitalizations took place in St. Louis, which is about a two, two and a half hour drive from the Carbondale campus. And so he'd leave practice and go immediately to the hospital, spend time there. He was on the phone, whether he was doing recruiting or talking to his, his staff. But, uh, you know, it's one of these, um, you know, massive responsibilities for a young head coach to take over a program, especially one that's been this successful. Then you add to the fact that he's got not one, but at, at one point, two sick children, and his wife was on bed rest before she had her baby. It's just an amazing story, and he's held, handled it with as much class as, as any guy possibly could. Well, he said basketball really became the sanctuary yep. for him. This was kind of his escape, and as Stetson Harrison was saying, you know, all the troubles he had at home, he never, ever once brought it to the court. As Tatum with the shot clock winding down, misses the pull-up, battle for the loose ball, and guess who gets it? It's Tatum with a fresh 35. Hairston. now Brooks, he's been relatively silent. And he misses the three. Here comes Mathis leading the way for Creighton. There's a perfect example of what Matt Painter said about Brooks last year. Best player inside three-point range in the country. Just when he gets beyond that step, he's just not nearly as good a shooter. This is Brooks outside the line. He's 35% three-pointers on the year. Nice, nice pass, pass to Falker. And a foul, going to go against Nate Funk. Wow, great look, great look. Both teams are doing a tremendous job of emptying out that lane because both Creighton and Southern Illinois want to hedge hard on the pick and roll. And here you see the pick and roll coming. Tyler McKinney, tough defense. There's the high hedge. Nice little bounce pass on the pick and roll. Both teams now with six fouls. So he'll be shooting a one and one on the next one. After the refs confer now, they're going to give it to the Salukis. I would say Dane Altman not exactly happy with the overrule from the sideline official. That's a safe assumption. It's a great league. It's a great league, great places to play. You know, with the exception of a place like Carbondale, most are middle-sized city like a Wichita, like a Peoria, like an Omaha. Great basketball fan. Had three teams in the tournament back in 1999. Two teams every year since. As Doug mentioned, Southern Illinois, three straight years as an at-large team. Eighth in the RPI this year, so they figure to get at least two as Lamar Owen misses it out of bounds, loses it out of bounds, I should say. But you got to figure Wichita State and Southern Illinois, barring real collapses, Doug, should probably be in the dance. Yeah, with Randy Burns and with Campman and you know, the three, and Jamar Howard, the three senior stars for Wichita State. They're a tremendous team. They still have to come back here to Carbon there, though. And as we've seen, they won 52 uh, 52 and 1 over the last four years. It's just tremendous. 33 consecutive home wins in conference play. Difficult place to win, obviously. Tyler McKinney getting called for the charge there. Now this is uh, it's a tough league to win on the road in. You said a lot of really good arenas. And this has been the toughest one, at least recently. And you watch for Jamal Tatum to probably come off a high screen looking to shoot the ball. He will pass. It's something he does more of this year than last year. But he's the one guy who 
has that bravery on his chest. He'll take any shot at any time, and he has the green light to do so. Well, let the shot clock wind all the way down to eight. Tatum. Wow. And now you see what? Ten points now for wow, Tatum. Wow, Darren a steal by Brooks, and that's what he does so well. <laughs> Darren Brooks changing the momentum right there with the steal. McKinnon misses the half-court shot. And SIU heads in the locker room with great momentum. Uh, yeah, but just devastating for Creighton. I mean, Darren Brooks only five points, but the steal right before the break. Jamal Tatum going one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, this is a two-point game with under 10 seconds. Jamal Tatum hits the bucket, and then that's why this guy leads this, lead, this, this team in steals, rebounds, assists, and points. He does a little bit of everything. Now a seven-point advantage. He's on the verge of passing Larry Bird on the Missouri Valley Conference all-time steals list. Let's go to David Amber, seven-point SIU lead. It's a seven-point lead at the half for Southern Illinois, but the score a little bit deceptive. SIU scored five points in the last ten seconds of the first half to take that seven-point lead. Dave Revs and Doug Gottlieb, and this has been a pretty even game. Oh, it's been a great game, especially with Creighton. The ability for them to slow the pace of the game, but they can't be careless and turn the basketball over. I really think they need to attack Southern Illinois much the way they did to start this game, which was in transition. Nate Funk driving, kicking off to a teammate. And Nate Funk creating for himself the the problem with the Salukis are they're so talented in many different ways. Their best player, Darren Brooks, does it with the pass, creating things for his teammates. And then at the end of the half, a huge play. The pressure, time running down, he gets a steal. He leads his team in steals. He's about to pass Larry Bird on the MVC all-time steals list. Then Stetson Harrison creating transition baskets. This is how the Salukis are effective by scoring off of their defense. At just five points for Brooks, but you talked about it right off the top. He did so many things well. The rebounding, the assist that we saw, the steals. Darren Brooks doing it all. And Nate Funk, another guy who also can do a lot of things well. He leads him in scoring and rebounding, led him in scoring and assists last year. So he's a guy like Brooks and has a lot of different things in his arsenal. Yeah, three assists, no turnovers. Tyler McKinney does have four turnovers in the first half, and he's been doubled off the pick and roll. We'll see what type of adjustments Creighton has made. Now uh, Funk nearly turns it over. Mathis. Shot clock down to 10. Mathis hanging in the air. Can't get it to go, and Stetson Harrison has the rebound. And here comes SIU. It's Tatum. Now Darren Brooks. Creighton very solid defensively in the half court. Their problems have been defending the transition game at SIU. Warren misses. And here comes Tyler McKinney. McKinney tries to get it ahead. Tatum knocks it away, but Watts comes up with it for Creighton. Now Tolliver inside gets held by Josh Warren, his first. So when you look at the first half stats, Dave, I mean, very, very similar. Obviously, SIU shooting a little bit better percentage, re out rebounding Creighton, which has been the bugaboo. But assists and turnovers, uh, Creighton leading one, trailing in another. A close game until the last two plays of the half. As Funk gets three of those points back, he now has 10. And it's a four point game. Uh, he's got a perfect looking shot, doesn't he? Ashton misses down low. Funk refined that shot in his basement in the furnace room. They had an eight-foot ceiling down there. His dad put up a hoop, and he'd be down there at all hours. They'd have to get him out of there to go to school in the morning, and they'd have to get him out of there to put him in bed at night. Just one of the many players Dane Altman's gotten from the state of Iowa. Of course, of course Brody Darren played there last year, and Nate Funk plays here now, and Tyler McKinney. And by Kyle Corver and Ryan, Ryan Sears, two of the greats. And Kyle Corver, we'll see him All-Star Weekend next week in the NBA in the, in the rookie sophomore game. If you're not familiar with the geography, Omaha is right on the Nebraska-Iowa border, so it's kind of a natural place for them to recruit. There's been some really good talent coming out of Iowa the last decade or so. Tatum misses the pull-up. Shaw goes over the back, trying to get the board. 
Now, the fans don't like it, but a pretty good call, especially on the road. And the thing that Creighton's been able to do here in the second half, in addition to limiting their turnovers, is one shot and done with SIU. They only scored three points themselves, but the reason the gap has closed from seven to four is one and done with SIU. They beat you with steals, leading to transition baskets, and second shot opportunities. The Southern Illinois yet to score here in the second half. Led it by seven at the break. They've won 33 straight Missouri Valley Conference home games. 21 straight home games overall. And now an ear steal at midcourt. Shot clock down to eight as McKinney retrieves it. This is Mathis. Mathis right into the lane. Little scoop. Can't get it to go. And Southern Illinois has it. Tatum now gets grabbed by Mathis. Now you get the feeling the first team to start getting in an offensive rhythm and getting a flow. If it's Southern Illinois, they can create some separation. But if it's Creighton, and this is the second little close shot that Mathis has missed. He missed a floater on the first possession when they held till about five seconds in the shot clock. And then you get in there close. I'm sure Dane Altman's saying, go in there and finish. He's not going to block your shot. He's trying to take a charge. 37-33, Southern Illinois. Two teams that between them have made eight NCAA tournament appearances in the last six years. Southern Illinois has been to three straight as an at-large. Creighton had a streak of five straight NCAA attorney bids. Ended last year. They ended up in the NIT. Tolliver trying to get some inside points, something we haven't seen much of in this game. Now the steal. Tatum ahead of the pack. Just smells points. He turned it over on the previous possession, but he gets it. He sees a gap and he sticks his nose in there and scores. 14 points off turnovers now for Southern Illinois. You see what I mean? Neither team can score for three or four minutes, and all of a sudden, bang, bang, two straight buckets. But transition, both these teams are much better at scoring in transition, but this is conference play. Both coaches understand that, and the idea is to slow the other team. Unfortunately, it's working for both teams. <laughs> now Brooks. It's hacked. It's going to go against Tyler McKinney. That's going to be three on Tyler McKinney. And talk about how valuable he is to this team, Doug. He's going to have to go out of the game. Yeah, it leads to them, obviously, in assist. But they're just a much sounder team offensively, getting into their sets. He's also a big point guard. We're talking about the Iowa connection. But uh, he, he has done some amazing things without putting up huge numbers. He's, he's a Darren Brooks in his own sense. Young man sidelined. Last year, two cornea transplants. Remarkable comeback for him, and they are a decidedly better team with him in the lineup. Stetson Harrison hitting the three. He now has 11. And Stetson Harrison, we talked about he was suspended for the first three games of the year, two exhibition games in one game, but he's struggled with his jump shot this year. Told me today he's been putting in a bunch of extra time trying to get his feet set, get in balance, as he did on that jump shot. And Creighton calling timeout there as Mathis was surrounded. Says SIU timeout, actually a Creighton timeout there. Well, coming up, it's the question SIU fans hear all the time. What exactly is a Saluki, the origins of this unique nickname? Next. Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. The Saluki on top by six. The question of what exactly is a Saluki one you hear a lot around Ooh. here. Saluki, an Egyptian hunting dog, the world's oldest purebred. Records dating to 3600 B.C. chronicling the life of the Saluki. And in 1951, the students here at Southern Illinois voted on that as the school's mascot. This area of Illinois is known as Egypt for its fertile soil. And so that's how they came up with an Egyptian hunting dog as the mascot. And there were times last night when we were driving to our hotel, I felt like we were outside of Cairo, actually. Certainly seemed like a long drive, yes. didn't it? A little bit of a remote location here, about two hours from St. Louis. Nate Funk misses the pull-up. I suppose it's not remote if you live here. <laughs> it's all relevant. It's home. <laughs> well, and that's what's interesting about this team. Our, about half of SIU's team is from St. Louis, which is polar opposites from Carbondale. Shaw, nice passing there, and ends up in two for Matt Shaw. Shaw, not far from here, is his home, in Centralia, Illinois. As Motes misses the three, Tatum is fouled on the rebound by Nate Funk. 
So Southern Illinois with its largest lead starting to pull away just a bit in this big Missouri Valley Conference rivalry. Back in Carbondale, I've got to believe the red wig would be a bit of a concern for Linda. <laughs> Well, Dave, scoring is at a premium here in the second half, and Southern Illinois and Creighton both trying to find ways to score in the half-court offense. As you see, Matt Shaw, the freshman, the pick and slip, and with Creighton overplaying the pick and roll because the guards just have such a great ability to come off that pick and roll and turn the corner and score. It's a great way to get offense, cheap, easy offense off the pick and slip. Shaw with eight points already exceeding his season average. Started the last six games now, averaging just over eight points a game as a starter. So he's picked up the offense, and that's exactly what Southern Illinois needed. A little more inside punch. And now Shaw on the baseline misses, and Funk gets the rebound. Mathis, nice wow. reverse. Wow. You know, he missed the first two floaters of the second half. Missed the floater and then missed an underhand scoop shot, but that's taking it to the basket with authority. Wow. How about that, Dave? Very nice. I was wide open, Doug. Yeah, but now you turn the basketball over. Are I you going to give the ball to the I official? Uh, yeah, it was. It yeah, was. You cannot make a pass with one hand, but look, uh, going up and underneath the basket, the athletic ability is evident there for Johnny Mack. I'll tell you what, it's tough when you're sitting next to a former guy, guy who led the nation in assists. I mean, one bad pass, come on. Uh, one bad pass is enough to get Eddie Sutton to take you out. Why shouldn't I say something about it? All right. You're schooled by a tough one. Yeah. Foul there on Tony Young. That's going to be his third. As we remind you, full day of college hoops on ESPN concludes with ACC action tonight. J.J. Redick and Duke taking on John Gilchrist and Maryland. A team that knocked them from the ranks of the unbeaten earlier this year. So two teams that flat out despise one another going head to head. What yes. better way to finish off rivalry week than that? And Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, Reese Davis, college game day. They'll be there. I wonder who Digger's going to predict will be the star of the game since his predictions. He, he called Notre Dame, beat oh, Boston he's College. He's been hot, hasn't he? He has been hot. Yeah, he's been really hot. I'm in Vegas. That's the guy I'm listening to tonight. Four fouls now on Tony Young. So he's going to have to check out for Southern Illinois. And it's a guy who's been a real spark plug off the bench for them, so that could be big. Yeah, he also can shoot the ball, stretch the defense, but especially his defense at the point of pressure as soon as you cross half court. That's what he's effective at. But Johnny Mathis is, after missing those first two shots now, two consecutive times, taking the ball to the basket, one getting a bucket, now creating a foul. Nine points now for Mathis, who's, like several of these Creighton players, worked for ESPN a couple summers on the College World Series. Of course, he's in Omaha every year, one of the great traditions in that town. Southern Illinois saw a little bit of action in the first half. There's number two. Four point game. Southern Illinois led it by as many as eight. Hairston. How about that? From Stetson Hairston. Well, the lights are on, the popcorn's popping. You gotta step up when you're a senior, especially the only guy who played in the Sweet 16 team a couple years ago. He was a starter on that team. He's just a freshman. Like I said, struggling with his shot, but he's put in the hours in the gym and seems to be paying off this afternoon. Now Milliner gets fouled there. It's going to go against Hairston, his second. Creighton continues to spread the defense and take the ball to the basket, create foul opportunities, get into the free throw line. It's all about balance with this offense. As you watch, four out, one in, constantly cutting off that high post who rolls into the low post, but keeping the floor spaced and balanced allows those lanes for penetration. Also plays very well under their perimeter shooting, which is outstanding. Best three-point shooting team in the Missouri Valley Conference. Flip side is they get only 25% of their scoring from inside players. Remember, this is a team beat Ohio State, beat Missouri and Kansas City at the Guardians Classic, beat Xavier at Xavier, but has struggled after that 8-1 start from 7-8-6. and eight six. Also beat Nebraska. They have owned Nebraska, that in-state rivalry, with the exception of the NIT game last year. best all-around players in the Missouri Valley Conference. He was the player of the year last year. He's fouled on the way to the hoop. 
It's going to go against Jeffrey Day. His third. Brooks still stuck on five points. At the line for Southern Illinois, number one, Darren Brooks. Keep an eye on his shot here, Dave. As shoot his jump shot and his release has his left thumb involved. His left thumb becomes involved with the right hand release. The left hand is supposed to be a bookend hand, and if there's one thing you point out at why he's not a better shooter from distances, he gets that left thumb into his jump shot, and that's probably what keeps him from being a great three-point shooter. So if you're a coach, do you try to mess with that? Uh, probably not till he finishes with school. I mean, something you could fix over a summer. You know, you can tape that left thumb to his hand because you don't need it. But it'll throw off your shot for a good, you know, four or five months. Mathis penetrating, hanging, and missing. Now Hairston. It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. figure maybe why mess with success I mean yeah. guy was the Missouri Valley Conference player of the year last year but perhaps what you're saying here is in terms of uh, advancing with his game yeah advancing with his game I mean now he shoots 35 percent which is not terrible just the one thing that separates him from being you know arguably one of the top 25 players in all of college basketball is the ability to stretch the defense with long range and he does everything else well except shoot beyond about 20 21 feet and Matt Painter said last year if there's no three-point line he's the first yep. guy you take I think he's the first guy you take anyway in this league. Well, in this league, I think he meant yeah. just about anyone. <laughs> Here's Hitman missing inside, and Owen has it for the Saluki. You think Matt Painter would take the Purdue this year? I think they take just about anyone off this team. Yeah. Been a tough year for Gene Cady, not the way he wanted to go out, certainly. And again, this staff very much intertwined. Matt Painter, Bruce Weber, Chris Lowry. All of them were on the staff here a few years ago. Now all gone their separate ways. Hairston oh, hits the three. Stetson Hairston is hot, and he's got 17. Oh, he is absolutely feeling it. So the lead is up to nine. It's the biggest it's been the whole game. And Dana Altman wants to talk things over. This is a difficult place to play. They've won 52 out of their last 53 ball games in the last four years in this building. 33 in a row, conference home wins. And the reason is they just maul you defensively. And if they get hot, they start to hit a couple of shots. And a guy like Stetson Harrison's a perfect example. He can shoot the basketball. He shot better throughout his career, but he struggled so far this season. Now he's hot tonight. That's why they have the big lead. As Stetson Harrison came in shooting just 40 percent, but having a big game here today and doing a lot of different ways, Doug. Yeah, coming off the screen, catching. But again, sometimes a dunk gets a guy going, gets his juices flowing. Now you see him shooting off the dribble. He's got confidence. All of a sudden, deeper range. Now you have almost NBA range. He's feeling good about himself. And this is a guy who, as a senior, you feel like, hey, you want to get him the basketball when he gets hot because he understands rhythm and flow, and I've hit a couple shots, now I'll take some more. Uh, Harrison, six of nine from the field now, four of six from three-point range. Clearly feeling confident, and as you said, Doug, that's not something that's really flowed from him this year. Yeah. With the shot, now Funk. Creighton in desperate need of a hoop. Mathis to the hoop, and he gets fouled. So Johnny Mathis will shoot a pair when we come back. It is Southern Illinois by nine over the Blue Jays. Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. Southern Illinois by nine over Creighton. Missouri Valley Conference has been dominated by these two 134 wins in the last six seasons for Creighton Southern Illinois 132 no one else in the Valley has more than 101 so you understand why this is a great rivalry and Doug this is a critical juncture of the game for the Blue Jays and a critical juncture of the season for the Blue Jays 15 and 9 and in danger of not only falling out of the league but falling out of contention for another at least NIT berth and 
with res respectability on the line. It's now eight points with the made free throw. You cut it to seven. They have to get some steals, get some stops, make some baskets, get this thing close, and put the pressure on Southern Illinois. Johnny Mathis hitting the first free throw. He moves into double figures with 10. We'll see what Dane Altman's crew can do defensively here now. And you're seeing the one, two, two pressure cutting off that pass to the middle, slowing the pace. And at some point, they'll look to get a steal if there's a lazy pass made. But Slokies really haven't done anything great in their half court offense. They've just stepped up and hit three threes, three for three, in three point range in the second half. Now there's the trap in the first pass. Darren Brooks, Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. He's number one for Southern Illinois. Also the Defensive Player of the Year. We've seen a lot of good defense from the Salukis in this one. Shot clock down to four. Hairston's been the man. He misses that one. Battle for the loose ball, and it's a held ball that's going to go to Southern Illinois. Again, the pick and roll on the strong side of the zone with two guards on the weak side. One, which is Stetson Harrison at the three-point line at the free throw extended, and one in the corner. They're looking to come off that screen roll, get to the middle lane, and create a shot for one of those two wing players, either on the wing or in the corner. Now, something to keep an eye on. Tyler McKinney has checked back in for Creighton. McKinney has three fouls in the game, but he's really kind of their glue guy. He's not a guy who puts together very impressive stats, but Historically, they're about six points better in games he plays than in games he doesn't. So we'll see whether or not this might give Creighton a little bit of a spark here as Hairston gets called for the walk. Take a look at our Cisco Systems game track. Southern Illinois shooting the ball far better. Stetson Hairston has been the story for them. His best game in the last dozen games in terms of points. And Nate Funk, as expected, having a good game for the Blue Jays. And as expected, Southern Illinois cuts down the offensive scoring of their opponent. Lamar Owen finishes ahead of everyone. Chris Lowry preaches defense into offense. Says they spend about 60% of their practice time on defense, and we're seeing some of that right here, Doug. Yeah, well, that's how they generate offense. They're not great in the half court. They're explosive, though, in the full court when they created off a steal, off a rebound. 16 points off turnovers now for the Salukis. Woo! It'll be Creighton ball off the miss. Chris Lowry's team on top by nine. Uh, this is a team that holds their opponent to 60 points or less more often than not in conference play. Best point percentage, excuse me, points per game defense in the league. And you look at how difficult a place this is to win. 21 in a row, 52 and one over the last four years. And that's what's so staggering. The only team to beat them in that span was Charlotte. Yep. Came in here and won a non-conference game. So it's 33 straight Missouri Valley Conference home wins. Remarkable run for the Salukis as Funk misses and Southern Illinois going to try to build on what is a nine-point lead. Now Hairston. Brooks has been relatively quiet, gets a screen there, instead tries to slip it inside to Warren, and McKinney comes out of there for Creighton with the loose ball. Think about it, Charlotte. Charlotte comes in here and wins last year. They also started off the season with a win at Syracuse the night they raised the banner for the national championship. Big shot there by Kellen Milliner. Well, that's one of those programs similar to Southern Illinois, a team that's had some real success in the NCAA tournament. Bobby Lutz does such a good job there with Charlotte. Northern Iowa defeated Illinois State 65. School a lot of people don't talk about until March, but will really follow the mid-majors know how good Charlotte is. Yeah, well, it's just like Southern Illinois. You know, until you see them on your bracket in March, now you start to do some research. How good is this team? This is a team that you don't have quality guard play. You can't handle their pressure defensively. They will eat you alive. Uh, Brooks going to try the three. And might be unconventional. It works there, though. Nine points down for Brooks. Yeah, it's not that he can't shoot. It's that he doesn't like to take it. He doesn't have great range. But just like last year, when they beat Creighton in Omaha, we called that game. When they broke it open, it was when Darren Brooks hit two three-point shots. The silent assassin. Guy who just hangs around and then gets you. Near steal there by Brooks. Milliner. This is the pull-up. Lamar Owen the rebound. And he's fouled. And Dana Altman is furious. Now, Brooks about to make a little Missouri Valley Conference history. We'll talk about that when we come back.
back in Carbondale. It's a nine-point lead for Southern Illinois over Creighton and Darren Brooks. Despite the fact offensively he hasn't done a ton in terms of scoring, contributing in so many ways as he always does for Southern Illinois. Two steals in this game, one shy of passing Larry Bird for fifth all-time on the Missouri Valley Conference steals list. That's a pretty good company. That's not bad company, no. And obviously, this is a conference with such pride on players that have gone on and played at the next level. Larry playing, obviously, at Indiana State and Terre Haute. But Darren Brooks, and he'll continue to pass people's record, especially here at Southern Illinois. Think about this, again, leads the team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and assists. And I have heard that at times, when they go on a and a team charter, he offers to fly the plane. The pilots, however, say, you know, that's fine, we can fly it ourselves. Career leader in steals, sixth in points and assists at Southern Illinois. Nice move. Warren misses, tipped in by Owen. So Lamar Owen providing a nice spark in the second half. But Brooks, a player not very heavily recruited, Southwest Missouri, Arkansas Little Rock, as McKinney is fouled on the way to the hoop. Was actually in terms of the profile of the schools, it's a high school quarterback, and Iowa and Wisconsin wanted him to walk on for football. He only played his senior year, and he impressed him so much. Says he can throw the ball 60 yards in the air. And I'll tell you what's interesting. You know, Arkansas Little, Little Rock recruit and Porter Mosier, now the head coach at Illinois State. They have really surprised people in this league. And the Salukis, now while they have Wichita State coming into this building later on in February, they also have to go to Illinois State. And Normal Illinois, difficult place to play with the Redbirds have it going as Porter Mosher has it this year. Now he's done a tremendous job because that's a program that was really down for a few years there. And they are right back in the thick of things in the Missouri Valley. A conference that is ranked eighth in the nation in the RPI. So you divide Division I into thirds, ten conferences each. This would qualify as a high major, at least in that concept. Well, they, they deserve multiple bids, and they've gotten it nearly every year. Jamal Tatum is a guy, the one guy on this team that can really go, create, and pull up, and shoot off the dribble. We saw it, the last possession offensively in the first half. Now here in the second half, they want to spread the floor, create those lanes, or he can go one-on-one. -on -one. He's a much better mid-range jump shooter than he is a long-range jump shooter. The foul was on Tyler McKinney, his fourth. And he is down on the bench. There you see Tyler McKinney. And a young man who survived two corneal transplants. Thought uh, this time last year, doctors were telling him he might lose his eye. Remarkable story. Owen. Now Brooks. This would be big. Can't get it to go. It's tipped around at Tatum. Does a good job controlling for the Salukis. And Southern Illinois calls timeout. And Milliner's really frustrated. He thought the pass had already been thrown, and it should have been a turnover. As it is, Southern Illinois gets the timeout. As we remind you, tomorrow it's February Frenzy on ESPN2. The early games, these are women's games, including Duke and Maryland, Kansas State and Oklahoma, Vandy and Tennessee. You'll see some of the great players in the country. Again, if one of these games involves a team near your home, you'll be able to see that game in its entirety. But aside from that, we'll take you to the best game as the action di dictates. You see some of the other games, UConn and Rutgers, Purdue and Minnesota. Should be a great day. Tennessee coming off a loss at LSU earlier this week on Thursday, matter of fact. So that'll be fun. Now you get, to, you get to go to Norman, Oklahoma, one of my favorite old stomping grounds, huh? Yeah, you've got a lot of fans there in Norman, I know. Uh, yeah, days I'm, in Oklahoma State. I'm not sure that's actually true, but uh, hey, look, this is a wonderful team and a wonderful story in Darren Brooks. And it's the ability to create offense off their defense. This was a huge play. End of the first half, only up five. They struggled to score the basketball. He gets a steal at the end of the half, and now they've really extended that lead. They found ways to create offense. 12 points. They're in danger of a blowout. Craig doesn't get it going soon. Well, they got five points in an eight-second span there at the end of the first half. That was probably the most critical juncture of the game. Certainly up until this point, as Tatum does a great job chasing down his own miss. And a fresh 35 for the Salukis. And the entire coaching staff jumped up and said, reset things, slow it down. And the entire crowd jumped up. They appreciate the effort. That was a quality shot by Jamal Tatum. He sees the miss. And, of course, the shooter knows where the ball is coming off to. Tatum. That's a good little round between those two, isn't it? It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. Yeah, they're really going at it. Yeah, quick and quicker. Johnny Mathis guarding Jamal, Jamal Tatum. 
Shot clock is under 10. Hairston misses the three. Battle for the rebound, and Watts is tied up by Owen. And they're going to call the foul on Lamar Owen. Now, this is still the style of game that Southern Illinois wants. They want to be the aggressor. They want to be up in you defensively, and then offensively, they shoot it, try and go get it. And Owen's the guy. How about he was the Mr. Soccer in the state of Kentucky coming out of high school? Great all-around athlete. So this is TV hair, by the way. Told me that before the game. Oh, yeah? TV hair. What do you think? That's a good look. Yeah. You ever I, mean, I wouldn't look? choose it personally, no. okay. but, you know, be a bit of a stretch for me. So Dane Watts hits the first free throw. Guy was 6-1 He's a high school freshman. Now 6-8 four years later, and he's got eight points. Stetson Hairston's been the story here for Southern Illinois. As Creighton's done a good job shutting down Taryn Brooks. But Brooks has distributed it nicely. Five assists in the game, and Hairston's been one of the beneficiaries. Now a steal by Brooks. He passes Larry Bird for fifth on the all-time Missouri Valley Conference list, but then he turns it right back over. Well, he didn't set a turnover's mark, but that is a turnover. But, hey, he gets the steal, passes Larry Bird on the all-time steals mark. Congratulations, Darren Brooks. Just a... A tremendous player. Now for Creighton, they are far from out of this game because remember they're the best three-point shooting team in this league, and they kind of live or die by it. They don't rebound the ball particularly well, especially for Dana Altman's taste. But with that ability to shoot the basketball, you can come back in a hurry. Milliner with the pull-up ah. misses. It's a big Creighton ball. I should say Southern Illinois ball. Uh, I, I think that ball was actually off Josh Warren. It's kind of what I thought too. Yep. We are being told that did not count as a steal because he stepped out of bounds before he had control of the basketball. Okay. So Larry Bird's not, record is safe for at least pack. a minute or two. An offensive foul there called on Tatum. This is a heck of a battle. Now these guys are really going at it. Yeah, well, Tyler McKinney out of the game, four personal fouls, and Johnny Mathis has just been pressuring Jamal Tatum. Let's see if he has. This is Darren Brooks going for the record with the steal. Right foot out of bounds. Yeah, that's a good call. Oh, Doug, I'm told now that the overrule has been overruled. Wow. Yeah. They wanted to see him set it here at home, apparently. It has been credited with the steal, so. He's now fifth all time in the Missouri Valley Conference steals list. Somebody, one ahead of Larry Burke. Somebody at home call, call from the bullpen? Exactly. I don't know. It's like baseball. I just give it to Error. That's not an error. That's a hit. Important possession there for Creighton. They missed an opportunity to get this thing back under 10. Southern Illinois just very deliberate offensively these last few possessions, Doug. Certainly in no hurry, and then this is their stop. Yeah, but Creighton a tough out. I mean, a tough out in, in every sense. Five and four on the road. They struggled a bit at home for a Creighton team. You know, back when they played at Muni, they were a great home team. Question Center hasn't been as kind to them. Pull up there by Tatum. He is so much better this year than he is than he was last year. Last year was a bit wild. Of course, he came off the bench. He was trying to score points in a hurry. He's really found his niche shooting those mid-range pull-up jump shots. Milliner, big three for three Kellen Milliner. He now has eight. That's what I'm saying. I mean, now it's it's nine, and they're still very much at arm's distance because of their ability to shoot the basketball. Well, they have six players coming into this game with 21 or more threes. The only other team in the country that can make that claim is Vanderbilt. So you understand just how potent Creighton could be from long range, and by no means is this game over. Brooks. It's going to be Creighton Ball. So Darren Brooks, after passing Larry Bird, trying to lead his team to a win, his rivalry week rolls on here on ESPN2. The game certainly of much interest here. Thanks a lot, David. Southern Illinois on top of Creighton, 63-54. We're talking about the potential, how many teams the Missouri Valley might get in. Southern Illinois, the projected RPI on the ESPN Insider RPI, Doug, is 14. Is this team safe no matter what happens? I don't think it's no matter what happens. They have Illinois State on the road, Wichita State at home. They're two remaining games that they could they, that they could lose. You have to win at least one of those two games, and then I think they're in pretty good shape. Remember, they beat Vanderbilt. They beat UTEP, who's another mid-major, who if they don't win the WAC, I think they, uh, they don't win the WAC tournament, I think they get in. 
but you got to win one of those two games, and then, of course, tonight, in order to guarantee yourself an at-large bid. And Jay comes up with the loose ball, so a turnover there by Southern Illinois. The Blue Jays try to hack into that nine-point deficit. Funk. Big three, Nate Funk. He's got 13. The Southern Illinois, you talked about, Doug, 14th in the RPI, and one of the reasons they're so high in the RPI is they haven't played many bad teams. I mean, St. Louis, Indiana State, the only teams worse than 200 in the RPI that they've played. So they built this thing up by beating most of the yeah. teams they should beat and by not playing anyone bad. Yeah, they lost at, at Louisiana Lafayette. Now, they have to maintain this lead, and Ellen Milner catches the basketball, but couldn't see the set as well as we would have liked. Nate Funk catching the ball because he got a great down screen from his teammate, and it allows him to catch and shoot in rhythm and look for Creighton to continue. They have several different types of full court pressure in their in their gym bag. And they, they bring everything to the table, and their ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter allows them to stay in this game. Here's a little bit better look. There's the down screen. And if you're lazy getting out, as Stetson Harrison, remember, he's a right-handed player. Stetson Harrison, you've got to lift your left hand up to make sure that your hand is in the, the arm or the, the eye of the shooter. Sleepy's doing a good job handling the pressure there. It's a two-possession game. Ooh. Now Brooks is left open. That's generally a bad idea. He misses that one. But Harrison, the board, it's blocked by Day. And it's going to be Saluki's basketball. A lot of fight in the Blue Jays. A lot of fight in the Blue Jays. And for Southern Illinois, they have to find a way to manipulate this defense and create themselves an offensive look. A block called right there. That's Paul Tatum just a little bit frustrated because on the previous possession for the offensive rebound, Darren Brooks came off a pick by Josh Warren. Josh Warren open on the roll. He doesn't hit him. So Jamal Tatum sees the hard hedge. He tries to feed Josh Warren. Fortunately, though, for Southern Illinois, hits off his hands, gets the ball to the best player, and that's Darren Brooks. And now he's got at the line, a chance to extend the lead. Brooks, 79% free throw shooter. Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year last year. He's already set. Southern Illinois single season record for steals this year was 75. Eighth nationally in that category. It's a great all around player, Doug. But keep an eye on that left thumb. The one thing, the one bugaboo is the ability to shoot the ball consistently from the perimeter. Watch that left thumb kind of get into the shot and go forward as his right hand goes forward. It's the only thing you fix in his shot. And I think if you tweak that, guy can play at the next level because he does everything else. He's a big guard, he defends. And how many teams in the NBA don't have guards that pass in the front? Funk was left open, misses the three. Creighton gets the ball off the deflection. And keep an eye on this. This is the defending Missouri Valley Conference player. You watch the left thumb. If you're at home, you have a kid who does this, tape that thumb up. Yeah, it just gets into the shot just enough. And at times, it throws it off, and it doesn't have the perfect backstep. Funk this time inside the arc. Same result as he misses that one. And a big rebound by Young, who's back in the game with four fouls. Final two minutes now. There's also the best free throw shooting team Southern Illinois is in the conference. So if you sense an air of confidence as they handle the ball against pressure, it's because they want you to foul them. I remember McKinney has four fouls, so he's probably not going to foul here. Time running down. Good defense position for Creighton. Watch for Tatum on the pull-up jump shot. He tried to pull up, it gets knocked away. And Nate Funk gets caught, grab it inside. That's four now on Funk. So Funk and McKinney both with four, so if they get into a situation here where they do start trying to foul, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, you can see an offense and defense switch. So they need to hit a shot, then call a timeout, then you make the offense and defense switch, you press and try and get the players with fouls out of the game. They gotta hit a shot in order to get into their press, though. Josh Warren at the line, 
Leaves that one short, Day the rebound. And here comes Creighton. Every possession critical now for the Blue Jays, down by seven. McKinney gonna take it himself. He just put his head down in midcourt and took it all the way. I'm not sure it's for McKinney. I'm not sure if Funk knows he has four fouls because he almost tried to foul on that possession. Now the reason is he doesn't play. He only has three fouls. Okay. That foul was actually on day. So Funk has three. McKinney has four. One minute left to play. Big hoop right there. The hanger from Tony Young. That's just a backbreaker. So under a minute, it is a three-possession game. Funk. I got to get something going here. That wasn't what they had in mind. Mathis missing, and Southern Illinois looks like it will extend the nation's fifth longest home winning streak to 22 games. Don't forget, tomorrow, NBA on ABC. What a great doubleheader. We'll start you off with the Spurs and the Heat. That's at 12.30 Eastern time. And then how about this one-on-one -on -one matchup? Kobe Bryant and LeBron James going head-to-head -head as the Lakers take on the Cavaliers. That's at 3.30. It's all tomorrow on ABC. On ESPN, I mean, excuse me, LeBron played last night on ESPN. Just think if he was a sophomore college. That's ridiculous. He is so good. Mathis, hard to the hoop, can't get it to go, gets it back, and Mathis makes the layup. So Southern Illinois missed a couple free throws here that have kept Creighton in the game. It's 66 61. And now Young's going to go to the stripe. You got to feel like with this, the, the best free throw shooting team in the league, the home win streak's got a chance to extend one more game. Oklahoma State, place I played at, Gallagher Iba Arena, the rowdiest arena in the country. Clune Arena at Air Force, difficult place to play, especially with their style of play. You've been to the new kennel at I Gonzaga. Have. Yep, of course, a lot of that home win streak was built at the old kennel. Yes. But uh, it's also a very tough place to play. They did a beautiful job out there in Spokane. As Tony Young goes to the line, he'll be shooting two with a double bonus, and Young rolls the first one home. You have to wonder, though, why the Salukis don't call this place the kennel, or they have the dog pound, which is where the students sit near here along the baseline. They need some type of name or moniker. You want to submit something? Uh, I'll think I mean, the kennel's already I, been I got, taken. I got 30 seconds left. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's game time. I mean, I'd say it you might have just be the pounds. Minutes. Just the pound. Call lane violation there on Creighton. So that very costly against Jeffrey Day. Young's going to get another shot at it. Yeah. Got to do something and do it in a hurry. McKinney misses the three. And Young gets the rebound. Play. And Young is headed back to the line. And remember, this is a big win for oh, Southern no, Illinois, no, but, no, you know, this no, by no means seals the deal that they're going to the NCAA tournament. Creighton, a good win. They have some quality wins on here. They beat Missouri. They beat Ohio State and Xavier. But you look at Southern Illinois. Wichita State comes in here in a couple weeks. Southern Illinois has to go to Normal Illinois. That's their next game. The Redbirds coming off a loss, but they'll be fired up and ready to go in Porter Mosier doing a tremendous job. And SMS started the year at 1-6 in this league. They beat this same Southern Illinois team. Now they're at 8-6. and six. Everyone you talk to says that that is a team with just unbelievable talent. People who have watched this league all year say that may be the most talented team in the league. Yeah, Blake Ahern is a, is a nice talent that not a lot of people know about. He's leading this league in uh, free throw percentage, but he's a guy that folks down there love his ability but they have six or seven deep and most people feel like they're now playing at a level where they could easily win the MVC tournament which is known as Arch Madness. Funk for three and he hits that one probably going to be too little too late. 
will be a full timeout of the court. We'll have a full timeout of the court charge to Crane does call timeout, though. We'll be back in action on Wednesday, the, the correct score is 69-64. Five-point ball game. The Panthers of Northern Iowa. Uh, Dana Altman is one of these coaches that he is so well-respected throughout college basketball. Remember, at a, at a pretty good run at Kansas State. I mean, everybody thinks of Kansas State because of what Jack Hartman was able to do. But there's a reason that, you know, Lonnie Kruger won some there, and he was a Lonnie Kruger assistant. They haven't won a bunch since. It's not because they haven't had uh, Tom Asbury as the heck of a coach at Pepperdine, but difficult place to win, especially in the expanded Big 12. And he was the last guy at Kansas State to beat Kansas. Well, they went to the NCAA tournament in his four years there, went to two NITs. Since he left, Creighton's gone to the NCAA tournament five times, Kansas State just once. Think about that, it's rivalry week. And Kansas State has lost 29 consecutive times to Kansas. That's not exactly an in-state rivalry anymore. No, at a certain point, I think it ceases to be a, a rivalry. But Dana Altman, you know, the last seven years, five NCAA tournaments, two NITs, and this looks like an NIT team. They got to keep it going, though. They got to keep winning a couple games because you want to get a home NIT game, especially with the Quest Center, which is just a beautiful brand new building in Omaha. Well, that works. Yep. Tatum ahead of the pack, and that will seal the deal if it wasn't already sealed. Seven point lead for Southern Illinois, and they're going to get out of here with their 22nd straight home win, their 34th straight Missouri Valley Conference home win. Well, if you're going to guard the ball, you have to know if you're the last man, you cannot get beat deep. And that's the problem with this defensive set by Creighton as they brought everybody up, and Jamal Tatum goes long and Mass confusion, touchdown Southern Illinois, and yeah, I guess they gave him a couple extra steps. There is the correct score now, 71-67. So, I mean, maybe it's not in the books quite yet, but it's really right, close. Look, Duke, Maryland tonight, and we've seen Duke come sure. back at Maryland with even bigger margin. <laughs> Having trouble getting it in. They do get it to Tatum, and that is your ball game. They get it ahead to Young, and Classic move there by Young. He yeah, just pulls it right back out. Yep. And these two teams obviously like each other. Tyler McKinney back in action. Still a pretty good story, but how about Darren Brooks and the Salukis? Well, Southern Illinois pulls it out 71-67. to 67. Coming up next, Polynesian Power Islanders in the NFL.